<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. But, hey, I did want to ask something. So, when you're growing up, was there pressure because your dad was Clint Eastwood? Did you, and then you said you wanted to be an actor you knew. Was mm -hmm. that, I, I, I know we're going back to it, but I was yeah, just wondering. Yeah, that's a good, good question. Well, I think, I think I always wanted to be a, tell stories. I don't know if I, I necessarily knew I wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. um, I think as I get older, I realize it's more about telling stories. Um, I just sort of fell into the acting. I was like, okay, well, this could be a way I could get in. I could, I could go into so that. So you just enjoy the entertainment process, like creating something that people can be entertained by and enjoy? Yeah, exactly. Telling a story that you know people can relate to, laugh, cry, whatever. Do you think you'll go the road of your dad and like maybe do some directing and writing yeah. and things like that? Yeah. yeah. Is that yeah. the plan? That's the plan. That's the plan. You know, it, it, taking control of your own career uh, is, is good. And it's also, you, you know, you tell the stories you want to tell. Yeah, we were talking about this before the podcast that the world of the actor is very difficult and a lot of people like accuse actors of being fake and i think one of the reasons for that narcissistic yeah, yeah. there's that for sure but yeah. one of the reasons for the accusing them of being fake is that they always have to put on the best show like as far as their behavior and the way they act and think and their opinions because they're constantly trying to get cast in things and sure. it's all about mm -hmm. getting to people like you and politicking and and we were talking also about like you kind of have to have liberal sensibilities like in this town if you if you're a, a Does right that go winger, together does that even make sense it seems like they contradict each other uh, liberal sensibilities that seems <laughs> well, well it's, it's one reason that i, I moved uh I, I moved out of la is you know years ago uh i just i got sick of yeah, there are great there are great people in LA. They're yeah. Great people and you know I'm I'm from California so I feel have a you know uh, as a has a place in my heart here. Um but I got out of LA because you know if you meet 100 people in LA you might you know meet you know, 95 that are full of shit and you know five good ones. Uh and and I think you're that too was, generous. <laughs> <laughs> you know that yeah it's a problem right? <laughs> and everyone I always I always ju I always judge it when when I meet somebody and I'm having a conversation with them and I ask how they're doing, you know, if I meet an actor or something, you know, how, how you been or what are you working on? Cool. And, you know, a lot of times they're just, they're just waiting for their turn to talk. Yeah. They're not even listening to you. Yeah. They're just sort of, you know, did you, you know, they're not going to return that and say, Oh, how, what are you doing? What, you know, what's going on? Yeah. You don't, yeah. you don't feel like a sincere conversation. No, no, not at all. Yeah. That's a big issue <laughs> with people in general, but in LA it's, I think this is the, the magnet for all the narcissists and all the people that want attention and the people that, that have a hole, they have a hole they need to fill up mm -hmm. for whatever their childhood, whatever, whatever sure. the fuck it is. Yeah. And they, they gravitate here and then they just communicate with each other the same way and everybody kind of like pretends to be someone who they're not and then hopefully they make it and then once they make it then they just you know become some fucking weirdo just it's 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 weird how many of them are like almost like cookie cutter like oh i've met that guy before he just looked different yeah. you know <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean it's like it's like the same person living a different life <laughs> yeah. oh, i've know this i know someone exactly got lazy what this on is. the assembly line yeah of people <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, this they fell asleep or something. <laughs> but the actor world is like I've met a lot of comedians that are similar, but they're a lot. They're very so much. But the actors, w boy, there's a lot that are super similar. Just mm -hmm. a lot of, you know. But then again, you'll meet some of them who've like figured it out and made it through, and they're super normal and re like Adam Sandler is one of the nicest guys you've ever met in your life. Really? Oh my God, he couldn't be nicer. Mm. Totally. Like if you didn't know he was Adam Sandler and you met him, you'd be like, ah, oh, it's someone's dad. Yep. Fucking super normal dude. Yeah, Tom well, Hanks. He's so, a right, that's what I heard. You but. said super normal. That's what people say, you know, like, because they ask me, oh, how's Scott? You know, I'm, seems normal. So that's why, <laughs> yeah. that's why you're like, so. You're, <laughs> you must not know me yet. That's like <laughs> the best compliment for an actor. <laughs> yeah, it uh, is, because an actor is like, they, uh, well, I don't know. So yeah. who am I to say who's normal, right? right but to yeah. me, he seems like a normal guy. And you said Adam Sandler was <laughs> completely normal. So that's kind of. Puts it in perspective. Yeah. Well, what I mean by normal <laughs> is like the, you could talk to them and they're really there. They're real sincere. Present, yeah. You, present. yeah. They're present. present. They're having a real conversation sure. with mm -hmm. you. And there's a lot of people that just don't do that. You talk to them and they're just putting on some, hey, how are you? Good yeah. to see you. I definitely don't trust You're people who, who are too nice. I'm like, <laughs> why are they so nice? Yeah. Like, this, yeah. this isn't right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's just a tough world for these people anyway, especially with the ones that haven't made it out here. It's so yeah. psychologically devastating because you're constantly going on auditions and you're constantly getting rejected. So you're insecure in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then you are 
hoping someone likes you so you go to this thing and 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 you're kind of like putting on your best behavior and you're dressing yeah. good and like hi p pleased to meet you a nice t all right all right hey hey thanks guys thanks for the opportunity you leave <laughs> and they don't like you they're like you they said you sucked at the audition what i didn't suck yeah they just really didn't like you they said yeah. you didn't make eye contact fuck and they, yeah. you know and people get weirder and weirder and if you meet an actor say like uh like one year and then you meet them 10 years later and they're still swinging and nothing's happening they might be like uh, b b almost ready to crack yeah like the, the, <laughs> right, at the right at that falling down with that michael douglas you know when he's fucking he's got the briefcase and he goes in traffic starts shooting people yeah like they're like a couple of days before that they're like right just on the break they the can't line, huh? take it anymore <laughs> it's a fucking devastating business right it's tough it's tough um but you know it it, like I, I mean we were talking about before it's it's all it's all built on hard work and your reputation yeah because like you said you know and you get a reputation for being an asshole or or you know showing up late to work or this that and the other and you know everyone's gonna know about it. it's a, it's a small place la or being a diva being a diva diva yeah. that's a big one right that's not a good that's not a good uh <sighs> adjective for you can't you. shake that one yeah that happens to people like in Hollywood mm -hmm. they'll they'll be doing a lot of big movies and you hear like oh she's difficult to work with yeah. and then they just fucking disappear sure <laughs> and, it's, and it's almost seems like Hollywood delights in shutting those oh, yeah. people out uh, they, they're rooting for you to fail yeah yeah, yeah. they yeah. kind of but when you prove to be like ungrateful in some way yeah. or you don't like like here's a perfect example well he kind of made it on television but you remember david caruso when david caruso was on nypd blue mm -hmm. everybody was like wow this guy's a great actor and then he quit nypd blue when it was this massive hit show and then went and started doing like some real shitty movies yeah and everybody was like why the fuck would you quit a big show like nypd blue and do a bunch of movies like boy i hope he fails and then the movies failed and then everybody's like ha <laughs> ha and then and then he never did a movie again you never yeah. saw him in a good movie like he like had this trajectory of this amazing career yeah then he became this caricature because then he was doing that stupid cop show where we would take his glasses off and say some stupid pun well it looks like he got nailed and he'd take his glasses <laughs> off remember that it was like csi miami or something like that and it was a fucking caricature of a cop show yeah whereas nypd blue when he was on it was groundbreaking i mean it was fucking fantastic so what happened it just he became an i don't know what? i mean i don't know who was he is he a diva? he came, is that he came the... recognized as a diva whether or not oh. he was actually a diva oh he, i don't know the guy you'd have to oh. meet him and talk to him and hang right. out with okay. him but he had that stink and yeah. you get that stink well, that, on yeah, that's that's the other thing too is it's not even you know in hollywood it's not even what's true sometimes right, it's just right. perceived it's so it's it, it, you know my dad used to always say he say uh, believe uh, half of what you see and none of what you hear and and that always stuck with me because you know you, you sit down with people in the industry or whatever and you just hear you know a lot of hollywood is a gossip right it's full of gossip queens everybody wants to talk shit about someone they worked with or tell some story and tell how difficult somebody was or this that and, and and you don't even you know it's a, a business built on you know it's a it's just a house of cards you know you're like well that don't, how do you even know that that's even true right you know mm -hmm. and so it's kind of fucked up uh yeah, it's you know. I mean, I don't feel like that happens in other businesses, but may, may, maybe it does with coworkers. I don't know. I don't. Maybe it does. It's also there's. A, it's a weird thing because when you're a movie star like yourself and you're on the screen, like you get all the adulation and all the love. There's a whole crew oh. of people behind you. Yeah. There's special effects yep. people and lighting and sound and it's directors and Jamie. producers. Guys and like Jamie. And young Jamie, <laughs> there's a hundred people to every one that's on the screen, right? At yep. least that's yeah. and so and they get no love. Yeah, it's <clears> weird, <throat> right? They, they get no, you know, they get no love, and and that's where the business side of the business is so delusion because it, you know, the agents and the people around us, they're not the ones there, you know, putting in the sw the sweat every day for five months to make a film, right. you know pulling the creative ideas pulling the hard work you know the, the the grips and all the all the guys who you know are underpaid and are you know working just to uh, make money to you know feed their families uh, so it, it's it's interesting because I, I saw it from a very different lens I saw it from my father's lens which is you know my, my dad show up on time get the movie done shoot it fast treat everybody good and and, and you know work with the same people over and over again and do the right thing by people have integrity 
uh, where it people don't see that side of 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 the business there's so much other stuff that you never that people never get love for in in the film industry yeah well in the long hours that's another thing that yeah. people don't understand if you're on a film set like what's an average day for you um it could be i mean a short day is a 12-hour day so it's you know 12 to 16 and sometimes. how many days a week you work in five six i mean when you're on location you're usually you could be in a movie that's doing a six-day work week or you could be doing a five day but by the end everyone's doing a six sometimes even you know you're just putting in full you're in full throttle to get the movie done now when you're on location do you have to squeeze a workout in to keep your brain oh yeah sane yeah, yeah, yeah how I do mean, you do that on a 16 hour day i try to do it during lunch uh because i find that if you go to lunch you you get sluggish after lunch right and then you, you're going oh well shit i gotta get back in there you know and do this i gotta mm -hmm. now i gotta hit the coffee or i gotta hit the whatever right. to get stimulated cocaine get back right up. yeah that's what you're saying <laughs> yeah just just just, <laughs> just, just a meth. Bump. are you a meth guy or a <laughs> coke guy <laughs> but mo mostly meth mo just just a bump Come to on. get the head straight <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> Woo! um but yeah so i think working out during lunch it seems to be the best thing for me because I don't do well in the mornings for a workout because I feel stiff. Mm -hmm. So I like to get the blood going first. If I can hit it during lunch, uh, even if I'm on set, I'll do whatever yeah. dumbbells, this, that, and the other, and then I'll have I'll get you know some endorphins kicking. <laughs>